Hi everybody, it's Mike the Cheap Vegan Bastard here. So today we're going to make um, cheese sauce out of, would you believe, cauliflower and squash. So we'll show you that in a minute here. So um, all you need is the cauliflower squash blender and I'll show you the, uh, the ingredients pretty quickly here now. Okay, don't forget we're a low budget show here. So I'm the crew, the cameraman, I'm everything here. So. Um, so we've got a butternut squash and some cauliflower. Um, the butternut squash I sadly had to pay full price for. It was about three and a half dollars. Um, they're not cheap right now, it's, uh, it's March. And the cauliflower I got for a couple of bucks. At where else? H&W Produce. So um, you can see we've got some vegetable broth over there and then some spices. So there's a little bit of uh, uh, okay, what do we got? We got some garlic, roasted garlic and pepper. We've obviously got the vegetable broth over there. We've got some paprika, some garlic powder, some coriander, some turmeric, some salt, and some pepper. And all those things will make a lovely vegan cheese sauce. My son James loves it. He can't get enough of it. He's demanding uh, Baked eggs benedict every morning, which we make with uh, either some toast, uh, a whole wheat English muffin, um, and some uh, firm soy. He loves it. Okay, I'm going to cut up the squash and the cauliflower, and you sure as heck don't have to watch me do that. You just cut it into uh, little pieces that I'll show you in a little while, and then you're going to be steaming them in an instant pot. Hey, all right. So. The best way to clean these out, I find, is with a melon baller. Right? So, you can use a tablespoon or something if you want, but it doesn't work near as good as this does. Because it's got the edges. Then we'll take the guts out. Nice and easy. And then just cut off the skin. Curry knife would work well too. All right, everything's set up now and cute, so um, we're ready to roll. All right, for cooking, just simply dump it in your instant pot. If you don't have one, a uh, big pot of either boiling water or you can steam it would work. But and no, I don't get paid by instant pot to say this, but these things are great and I'd consider getting one. I've got a cup and a half of vegetable stock and I dump that in there. Okay, you hit steam and it's set for four minutes. And the wonderful thing about the Instant Pot, it's set, it waits for a while for you to set it and then it goes by itself. And there it goes. Now obviously it won't be four minutes. It takes a while to steam up and then I always like to leave it in there for a few minutes after it's finished. Okay, it's nice and tender. Put that up here, obviously, once we get her going. Gonna grind that up a little bit. The thing about liquid is, don't put too much in off the get-go. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. But if you want a thick sauce, then you don't want to have too much, uh, too much liquid in there. And again, that's vegetable stuff. All right. All 
right, you can see the consistency right now. It's not bad, so I'd say it's a little thin, but not bad. But that will change once you add the nutritional yeast, which I forgot to mention at the beginning. I'm sorry. All right, so now some spices. flavor there's enough salt in there and the other spices and what's going to make the difference is I'm going to add a touch of coriander just because I like the stuff and I'm not shy with nutritional yeast there's some coriander so I'm going to start with a half a cup of nutritional yeast. Okay, all right. It's delicious. The uh, nutritional yeast really makes this recipe. So it adds a really nice cheesy flavor to it. So um, it's smooth. It's, uh, this is the consistency we like. And I'll show you a couple of things you can do with it right away here. Okay, made uh, just slightly more than a liter and a half. And that's what it looks like. Creamy, smooth, and it really is delicious. It does have a very much of a cheese flavor. Um, you cannot really taste the cauliflower or the squash per se. So, and you can see that it's thick enough here to make for a nice sauce. All right, one of the things we really love over here is, uh, is Eggs Benedict. So all this is, is it's firm tofu, and we fried it in the pan, and there's a little bit of uh, black salt and paprika on it. Instead of hollandaise, we can add this, but something I like to do is add a few peppers, and then put the cheese sauce on top. Delicious. And I always like a little bit of cilantro because it looks good. It's a beautiful breakfast. Another kid's favorite is mac and cheese. And it goes. Now, unlike the craft, it's in a box of craft macaroni and cheese. This is actually good for you. It's a uh, whole whole wheat macaroni and once again if you want it to make it look good add a little bit of that and there you are voila you can put it on top of your vegetables anything you can do with a cheese sauce you can do with this stuff you can make uh you can make some natural uh cheese out of it too i did that for a friend last week so bon appetit nice and creamy So Dr. Clapper, thank you for continuing our interview today. And we're so glad that you're here in Calgary, known as mm -hmm. Cowtown. Mm -hmm. So we have a ways to go with understanding plants and the value of uh, them on our plate. 
And one of the questions I wanted to ask you is for someone who is suddenly facing type 2 diabetes and they're given a whole regime of medications, not only metformin, uh, sometimes they're immediately getting onto insulin depending on how severe their A1C is. Uh, what can they do if they start a plant-based diet? When can they expect that there might be some medication changes uh, and even just some changes in how they're feeling? Sure. Uh, that's such an important question. Um, a number of levels. Uh, here's where medical science meets human nature and, uh, and uh, political negotiating a bit. Uh, and uh, as you're implying in your question, uh, many physicians uh, are not aware that their patient's diet has anything to do with their disease, including the type 2 diabetes. Um, they may be hostile to uh, changing dietary strategies. Uh, they may not feel secure in, in talking about nutrition. And then, if heaven forbid the uh, patient uh, utters the word vegan or, um, or, or vegetarian, uh, many doctors just write them off as a kook and a troublemaker and, uh, mm -hmm. and the quality of care can significantly diminish at that point. Uh, so what's the best strategy? Meanwhile, the truth is if you go on a fairly low-fat uh, uh, plant-based diet, and these are two caveats. One, when I say low-fat, um, it's the fat in the diet, especially the animal fats, the meat fats, the dairy fat, but also the heavy vegetable oils mm -hmm. get into the muscle cells, liver cells, clog up the enzymes and cause the insulin resistance. So this should be a diet of whole foods, lots of salads and soups and steamed veggies and lentil stews, etc. Um, but uh, with, with little or no added oil uh, in, mm -hmm. included in that, uh, in that caveat.